Would you all please stand for the Palm Sunday Gospel? The Holy Gospel for today is recorded in John chapter 12, beginning at verse 12. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and they went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, you see that we are gaining nothing. Look, the whole world has gone after him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.
bringing our world to Christ. It was three football fields long, 11 stories tall, 92 feet wide. At 46,000 tons, she was the largest and most luxurious ship ever built. She could carry nearly 3,000 passengers and crew with 16 watertight compartments below the sea level she was deemed unsinkable. But the Titanic was not. Tragically, only 700 of the 2,223 passengers on the Titanic survived. What's more tragic is the fact that a whole lot more could have been saved. And perhaps the greatest tragedy was that the Titanic was not that so many lives were lost, but that so few lives were saved, were rescued. Of the 20 lifeboats that were lowered, only a couple were filled to capacity. Several were half full. A few only had a handful of passengers in them. And after the ship broke in two and sunk, hundreds of people floated in the open cold waters in life jackets around these 20 lifeboats. But only one of the 20 boats went in search of survivors. The rest of them, with plenty of room in their boats, stayed at a distance comforting one another, grateful to be alive. And all the while, hundreds of survivors died within sight of these lifeboats, not by drowning, but by hypothermia. If they would have been pulled into the boat, they could have been saved. That's pretty sad. Does that ever remind us of the church? We've been saved from eternal judgment. We sing the songs of the redeemed. We're grateful for salvation, but we might be unmoved by the plight of those who are perishing around us. We have what they need. There's room in the boat. But we might get preoccupied sometimes with our survival celebrations. It can happen. You know what I mean. Activities that bind us together as the saved, sanctified, satisfied, and sheltered people from the world. That can happen. And that is not right. The church is not a club for those who are saved. The church is the only institution that really exists primarily for those who are not yet its members, to reach out and find those people and, and bring them into the, the nave. If you look up, you can see this is, this is a ship. This is the nave. This is the place where people are to be saved. No time we have, this is not the time to row away from, from those who are in deep water in their lives. 
In John chapter 12, our gospel for today, we don't find Jesus in a lifeboat. He's on a donkey. And the shadow of the cross is lengthening in his direction. And as his earthly ministry nears its end, his focus remains fixed. Jesus is on a search and rescue mission. People are his purpose, lost people. It's not those who are safe who need a lifeboat, he says, but those who are dying need to be found. And there's Jesus out there finding, searching. This Holy Week, as we walk with Jesus to the upper room to receive Holy Communion, as we go out into Gethsemane to pray, as we maybe go to the high priest's home like Peter did for a trial, as we maybe wander into the Antonio fortress and see Jesus beaten, mocked, and humiliated, and as we go out to Golgotha to see him actually crucified, we need to contemplate the inevitability of our own death. There is no escape. It could happen for us suddenly, just as it did for the passengers on the Titanic in 1912. But our being ready to meet the Lord isn't enough. We have a responsibility, as Jesus did, to others who face the deadline of a flat line. We have a responsibility to those who will maybe die without knowing what we know. People are in peril across the street and around the world, and we have to take steps to reach them. Let's go to a baseball field and use that as our image right now. God doesn't want us just to be safe on one of the bases of the ball field. He, he wants us to be up at bat where we can effectively bring some people home. He needs us to bring Christ to our world and our world to Christ. And our daily prayer should be, Lord, I'm available. Show me today what you want me to do to rescue your stranded people. Help me to bring them home. Our strategy for bringing the world to Christ is really very simple, prayer, care, share, and hang in there doing that. Start by praying today for, for someone you know that needs to be rescued from treading water who isn't in the lifeboat yet. Find a tangible way to care for that person. Find their pain. Experience that and pray about that. Try to identify their particular suffering to which they are vulnerable. And what challenges can, can you face in in helping them feel the love of God, the peace of God, the salvation of God. When the time is right, and sometimes the time has to be right, 
share what Christ has done in your life with them. But sometimes you have to wait for that critical moment, don't you? Because people don't want to be told. They want you to share after they've maybe asked the question, how, how can I find the, the peace that you seem to have? How, how can I find the confidence that you have? So find the time that is right and share what Christ has done for you. And maybe you'll even be able to invite them to the Easter service a week from now. Move them from second base to third base, if you can, in the baseball image, so that you can come up to bat and, and bat them home, so that they too can come where you are and find the grace of God through Jesus Christ. Let God move through you. Let God work through you. That's the way we bring our world to Christ. We bring our world to Christ and we bring Christ to the world. Let me share a story with you this Palm Sunday, the story of the life-saving station. On a dangerous sea coast where shipwrecks often occur, there was once a crude little life-saving station. The, the building really was just a hut, and there was only one boat, but they had a few devoted members who kept a constant watch over the sea, and with no thought for themselves, they went out day and night tirelessly searching for those who were shipwrecked. Some of those who were saved and various others in the surrounding area wanted to be associated with this station and give some of their time and money to support the work of life-saving. And so new boats were bought, new crews were trained, and the little life-saving station grew. Some members of the life-saving station were unhappy that the building was so crude and poorly equipped. They felt that a more comfortable place should be provided for those who were finding this place as their first refuge after being saved from the sea. And so these people replaced the emergency cots with beds and put better furniture in the enlarged building. And now the life-saving station became a popular gathering place for members. And they decorated it beautifully, and they furnished it exquisitely, and they began to use it as a club. Fewer members were now interested in going to sea on a life-saving mission, so they hired lifeboat crews to do the work. The life-saving motif was still there in the club's decorations, and there was a miniature lifeboat in the room in which the club sessions were held. About this time, a large ship wrecked off the coast, and the hired crew brought in the survivors, boatloads of cold, wet, half-drowned people. And they were dirty and sick, and some of them had black skin, and some of them had brown skin, some had yellow skin. The beautiful new club was in chaos. The property committee immediately had a shower house built outside the club where victims of shipwreck could could be cleaned up before coming inside. At the next meeting, there was a, a split in the club membership. Most of the members wanted to stop 
the club's life-saving activities, since they were unpleasant and a hindrance to the normal social life of the club. Some members insisted upon life-saving as their primary purpose, and they pointed out that they were still called a life-saving station. But they were finally voted down and told that if they wanted to save the lives of people who were shipwrecked in those waters, they could begin their own life-saving station down the coast. They did. But as the years went by, the new station experienced the same changes that had occurred in the old. It evolved into a club and yet another life-saving station was founded. And history began to repeat itself over and over again. And if you visit that seacoast today, you will find a number of very exclusive clubs along the shore. Shipwrecks are frequent in those waters, but most of the people drown. people of Grace Lutheran Church in Camrose. Loving, caring friends of Jesus. You who feel the love that Jesus comes to give, you who feel the love that Jesus had when he came into Jerusalem, not to be a leader, but to ride into the city as a servant on a donkey. You who know Jesus who came purposely to give his life for us who are drowning. I would like you to visualize the faces of those people that God has brought to your mind is as you think about those who don't know Jesus yet and who could come to know him through you. Those people that you're thinking of right now are very, very precious to God. And people who you can help with this strategy of prayer, care, share, and hang in there. Don't give this activity up. We can influence the world with the love and life of Jesus. We can, and we will, and you want to. And as we think about his servanthood, we think about his mission to come and rescue us by dying on the cross this week, this holy week. And we consider our mission here at Grace in Camrose as an active, caring, life-saving station. Don't be afraid, people of God. Your king is coming to you riding on a donkey's colt. He died for us, that we who live should no longer live for ourselves, but to serve him who died for us and rose again. Amen.